All right, what's happening? Y'all, it's your boy Rico from Street Scores coming to y'all with the Washington football team 2021 review episode five. And this is the top pro football focus grades at each position. And I'm also going to give y'all their rank amongst the league's best at their respective positions. And y'all are definitely going to see some surprises in this video, man. You're going to be like, wait, who? Who was the best? So I felt like this was going to be a fun video to do again be on the lookout for my quarterback series at first the first video i'm gonna do in the series i'm gonna do a complete breakdown of why the washington football team really needs to prioritize finding a franchise quarterback in the various ways that we can but then after that each further quarterback series episode will be tailored to one quarterback at a time whether it be a free agent quarterback or a quarterback we'd have to trade for or a draftable quarterback i'm gonna break down each and every one of them giving each of them an episode of their own of course for the draft guys we'll discuss weaknesses and strengths player comps projections and also most importantly where we may be able to get them in the draft where we had to trade up we had to trade back all of that type of stuff for each free agent of course we got to discuss how they would fit into the offense and most importantly how much money will they cost us per year contract wise cap hits all of that type of stuff and then the tradable quarterbacks of course like a deshaun watson or russell wilson we have to not only discuss everything we discussed with the free agent quarterbacks but we also have to add to that video what it would take to get those guys like what draft picks we'll have to trade what players we may have to include in the trade packages so be on the lookout for that quarterback series for sure i'm excited about working on that i've already started but i wanted to finish up this washington football team 2021 review series i have another episode of this where i compare our most important 2021 stats to the same stats from the end of the 2020 season to see if we regressed or progressed in certain ways like yards per game on offense or yards per game allowed by the defense third down conversions fourth down conversions red zone efficiency all of that type of stuff so definitely be on the lookout out for all of the content coming up but again today is the top pro football focus grades for each position on this team for the 2021 season again there's going to be some surprises and before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure y'all stay tuned all of the content i've already explained that i'm rolling out as well as some more mock drafts a lot of draft content a lot of free agent content and of course i will be live live streaming my live reaction to the jersey logo and all of that type of stuff when it comes out february 2nd so make sure y'all pull up for that and i will also be live streaming during the senior bowl especially watching all of these quarterbacks because there's literally all of the top quarterback prospects in this upcoming draft playing in it except for matt corral i mean literally all of them i don't even know how they're exactly going to split snaps it's going to be malik willis carson strong kenny pickett sam howell bailey zap desmond ritter i don't know how that's gonna work all of them aren't even gonna be able to get a quarter each so i really don't know and then of course for quarterbacks that i really care about like a malik willis i'll probably even live stream their pro days like how i did with trey lance but without further ado let's get it All right, so for quarterback, technically Kyle Allen has the highest grade out of any quarterback that played for us this season. That's including Ryan Fitzpatrick, Garrett Gilbert, and even Taylor Heineke. He has a 63.5 grade. Garrett Gilbert is second with the 59.7, and Taylor Heineke was third with a 59.4. But at the same time, Taylor Heineke was the only one that played enough snaps to actually be ranked amongst NFL quarterbacks, and he's 33rd out of 37. Again, that's not including Garrett Gilbert and Kyle Allen who have higher grades than him they're not ranked they didn't play enough snaps Garrett Gilbert played 55 Kyle Allen played 37 Ryan Fitzpatrick only played 16 so technically Taylor Heineke is our highest ranked quarterback this past season just by default but he wasn't even the highest graded and that's just mostly because, first of all, he went against a gauntlet of defenses, even though I don't feel like Taylor Heineke is a franchise quarterback. And I feel like we need to do whatever we need to do to get a franchise guy, even if that's trade, draft picks, whatever. I just really want a franchise quarterback. I've been on that wave for years now. I've been trying to convince other people to join in. But Taylor Heineke also went against the first ranked pass defenses in the NFL. Like if you look at every quarterback that played in the NFL this season and the defenses that they had to go against, Taylor Heineke had the toughest average passing defense that he had to go against. So I think that's fairly reflective in his grade. And also, I mean, just from playing more, you're allowed to make more mistakes. Whereas Garrett Gilbert, Kyle Allen, 
didn't have enough opportunities to make their big mistakes. I mean, Kyle Allen, you start them, you'll see them mistakes start to fly, all those turnovers and everything. Then moving on to receiver, no surprise at all, of course, is Terry McLaurin. But the sad part is how close, how far away everybody else is. Terry McLaurin has a 78.3 grade, which is 19th out of 125 eligible wide receivers to be ranked around the NFL. Then next up, you have DeAndre Carter with a 63.7, 88th out of 125. Then you have Adam Humphreys, who's 105th out of 125. And then De'Ami Brown, who's 113th out of 125. So it's Terry McLaurin top 20 and nobody else top 80. Like, that's ridiculous. We'll see what happens when Curtis Samuel comes back. Because even though he's not ranked because he didn't play enough, he has the second highest grade technically with a 66. But again, he only played 84 offensive snaps. Pro Football Focus definitely felt like that was not worthy enough to receive a rank amongst the NFL. Curtis Samuel was not one of the 125 eligible receivers to receive a rank. So yeah, man, that gap between Terry McLaurin and everybody else. And I feel like, honestly, I know Pro Football Focus tries to isolate guys and take into account what they're playing with. And even if their quarterback situation is bad, what do they look like on an individual level? But I still feel like if Taylor Heineke had a quarterback that can actually hit him in stride deep down the field and get him the ball in tight windows, he would have a higher grade and would definitely be ranked in the top. 10 because to me he's easily a top 10 receiver but you know with the quarterback situations he had to deal with I mean the fact that he had to deal with four different quarterbacks throughout this season he's had to deal with like four different quarterbacks each season since he's been in the NFL poor guy please get this man some consistency pay him big money and get him a franchise quarterback because honestly if I'm Terry McLaurin and the Washington football team doesn't at least attempt to like really really try to get a quarterback this offseason I'm not resigning me personally I'm not about to put up with this there ain't enough money in the world for me to keep dealing with this inconsistent quarterback play and in the chaos surrounding this franchise i can go get the same money or more somewhere else then halfbacks technically jonathan williams has the highest grade with a 74.6 but he only played 55 offensive snaps and it's interesting too because when you look at like specific grades his pass block grade was by far the worst on the team he had a 24 the only one in the red a 24 pass blocking grade but when it came to running the ball he had a 79 nobody else had even a 66 and again he had a 74.6 overall grade but he only played 55 offensive snaps so he's not ranked so out of the guys that are ranked between jd mckissick and antonio gibson jd mckissick has the highest grade with a 69.5 ranked 31st out of 52 running backs antonio gibson has a 63.3 Three ranked 51st out of 62 running backs. So please re-sign JD McKissick. Not necessarily for big money. Hopefully he's willing to take a fairly cheap contract to come back because I feel like we needed JD McKissick. But I mean, this also puts it into perspective how this running back group actually has some potential to it. I have the logic where you pretty much take a running back as an undrafted free agent or late in the draft, pretty much every draft. But if we bring back a healthy JD McKissick, I like Antonio Gibson, Jared Patterson, JD McKissick, and Jonathan Williams. Jonathan Williams was running very hard towards the end of the season when he had to go out there and play. Terrible pass blocker, but we can try to fix that. And it, but it reflects in his run grade. A 79 run grade is really high. Then tight ends, our highest graded and ranked player was of course John Bates with a 70.7, ranked 15th out of 74 eligible tight ends in the NFL. Then there's Logan Thomas second with a 64, ranked 33rd, and then Ricky Seals Jones with a 62.7, ranked 42nd. And then Samus Reyes had a 50, but he only played 39 offensive snaps, so it wasn't enough to rank him. But if you look at it, he has the highest pass blocking grade out of all of our tight ends with a 69. Second place is Ricky Seals Jones with a 67. Logan Thomas was third with a 65. And surprisingly enough, John Bates only had a 55, but he was by far the best run blocking tight end on our team with an 87. Nobody else even had a 60. And I can believe that. I mean, if you look at the tape, John Bates' run blocking was exceptional. And I definitely feel like he deserved to be the highest graded tight end. I think Logan Thomas is a great tight end. But first of all, with his inability to stay healthy and the fact that John Bates is already a better blocker and he has sure hands, I'm really excited about John Bates' future. To me, our best draft pick this past draft between him and Samuel Cosme for sure. Again, an 87.6 
run blocking grade. That's the highest in the NFL by far. John Bates, who's the 15th ranked overall player out of all tight ends, according to Pro Football Focus, had an 87.6 run blocking grade. The next guy was Baltimore's Eric Tomlinson, who had a 77 run block grade. Nobody else even had an 80. John Bates almost had a 90. So according to Pro Football Focus, John Bates is already the best run blocking tight end in the NFL, and it's not even necessarily close. I'm not going to go so far to say that, but I'm really excited about John Bates' future for sure. And of course, Logan Thomas had our highest receiving grade. And then for centers, of course, Chase Roulier was our highest graded center. He was fourth out of 40 eligible centers. So a top five center in the NFL before he got hurt with an 83.7 overall grade. And interestingly enough, you also have Wes Schweitzer who plays guard and center. He's ranked ninth out of all NFL centers. He's the backup with a 79.7 grade. And we're gonna get the Wes Schweitzer at guard as well because he's one of the top ranked guards too. Apparently Wes Schweitzer is one of the best offensive linemen in the NFL. And then of course, Keith Ishmael is a little bit behind those guys. Ranked 20th out of 40 eligible centers is still pretty crazy to me, but he did come in and play fairly well. He was just getting obliterated when it came to pass blocking and it reflects in his pass blocking grade. He played better than I expected. That's how I would word it. It wasn't really good at all, but it was definitely better than what I expected and of course his pass blocking grade was atrocious because he was just getting blown up and pass blocking and then Tyler Larson graded slightly above him by not even an entire point and that also reflects in how he came in to substitute after Chase Roulier and Wes Schweitzer got hurt he wasn't that bad he wasn't as bad as Keith Ishmael for sure especially in pass protection Tyler Larson actually has our highest pass blocking grade out of all of our centers that's including Wes Schweitzer and Chase Roulier but those two just have exceptional run blocking grade both 86 and above in the run blocking department and then guards going back to Wes Schweitzer he has a 79.7 grade which is ninth out of all eligible guards in the NFL so he's a top 10 guard and center in the NFL according to pro football focus he's actually our highest rated guard period Brandon Sheriff is 14th out of 83 with a 73.6 and Eric Flowers is 17th out of 83 with a 72. And that's not bad. To have three guards in the top 17 is crazy. Us and the Patriots are the only teams with three guards in the top 17 pro football focus rankings for the guard position. And again, Wes Schweitzer is our highest graded guard, ranked ninth with a 79.7 grade. Don't let the Burgundy and Gold see that because they'll let Brandon Sheriff go in a heartbeat if they believe that for sure. Then for tackles, Charles Leno was ranked 14th out of 83 eligible tackles with an 81.2 overall grade and a really high pass blocking grade of 87.3 which was second in the NFL only behind Andrew Whitworth from the Los Angeles Rams who had a 90.2 and right in front of Tyron Smith who had an 87 so according to pro football focus Charles Leno is a top 15 tackle in the NFL and he's the second best pass blocking tackle in the NFL and then you also have Cornelius Lucas who was ranked 30th out of 83 with a 75.2 and Samuel Cosby right behind him 31st with a 74.9 that's pretty good especially out of a rookie that got hurt and he definitely regressed coming back from injury maybe he came back a little too soon so I'm excited about Samuel Cosme because I think he's going to end up being a really good franchise tackle for us. He was actually the highest graded run blocking tackle for a minute, at least top five. I don't believe he was ever above Trent Williams at any point, but he was like top five in run blocking for a lot of the season. And then he got hurt and then he came back and wasn't playing as well. But I think he'll bounce back. I think he'll be straight. So to have, if we re-sign Cornelius Lucas, we already signed Charles Leno to a long-term extension. To have three top 30 tackles in the NFL, that's really good. It's only 32 teams. To have one is good, let alone three. It's crazy how deep our offensive line is, but somehow everybody got hurt. We have three top 17 guards, three top 30 tackles, technically two top 10 centers. And yet somehow we managed to let almost all of them get hurt then cornerbacks Kendall Fuller this surprised me he had an 81.5 pro football focus grade which is ranked fourth out of the entire NFL for 122 eligible corners to be ranked and it's mostly because of his run defense grade I mean his coverage grade is really high 278.7 but his run defense grade was an 87 that's the second highest run defense grade out of all cornerbacks in the NFL only second to Cameron Dantzler from the Minnesota Vikings who had a 90.9 Again, Kendall Fuller is ranked fourth out of the entire NFL for corners. Then there's a big gap. Then you have Danny Johnson, who's second, 
ranked 49th out of 122 eligible corners with a 65.4 overall grade then william jackson is 80th third out of our team with the 59.7 and then benjamin st juice is 103rd with the 53.7 and that surprises me i think he's gonna end up being way better than that next year once he finally fully recovers from his head injury situation and then for the safeties somehow surprisingly bobby mccain ranked 26th out of 94 eligible safeties in the nfl which is the highest on our team with a 70.9 overall grade. Cameron Curl was second on our team, 33rd with a 69.5. And basically the biggest differences between the two is that Cameron Curl has a better run defense grade, but Bobby McCain has a better coverage grade. And overall that places him seven spots higher than Cameron Curl out of the entire NFL. And then Landon Collins, who actually started to play very well after we finally started playing him in linebacker is ranked 83rd out of 94 safety. So I feel like that's too low, but at the same time, time they gave him an 82.5 run defense grade which is actually really high that's higher than Cameron Curls and of course Bobby McCain's as well but his overall grade with a 54.7 is even lower than Derek Forrest with a 66.1 but he only played 26 defensive snaps so he wasn't eligible to be ranked and then I don't know what's going on I have to watch the tape again because DeShazer Everett has a 31.4 overall grade which is like horrible that's right he's the only one red out of this entire safety group he may be the only red overall great out of our entire team pro football focus saying DeShazer Everett is the worst player on our team well if I stand corrected moving on the linebacker of course John Bostic has the lowest grade out of anybody that we ever threw out there on the field but he also didn't play enough to earn a rank but he's red with a 34.4 grade but Cole Holcomb ranked the highest on our team with a 56.8 grade I definitely feel like he deserved way better than that he was ranked 40th out of 87 eligible linebackers in the NFL Jamin Davis was second being ranked 68th out of 87 with a 44.5 grade but if we're just going purely off of grades disregarding who was eligible to be ranked or not Dijon Harris had the highest grade on our team with a 61.4 mostly being carried by his 77.4 pass rush grade and then Khalid Hudson actually had our highest run defense grade with a 77.9 and Cole Holcomb of course had our highest coverage grade out of our linebacker group with a 55.6 which isn't great and then for interior defense of linemen you already know who the top dog is Jonathan Allen with an 84.9 grade ranked third out of all interior defensive linemen in the NFL elite should have been an all pro at least a second team but he made the pro bowl at least but he has a 90.9 pass rush grade which is third amongst all defensive linemen in the NFL and what's holding him back is his run defense grade because he had a 54 run defense grade which is only higher than Deron Payne out of all interior defensive linemen that played enough to at least earn a grade not even just a rank Tim Settle played enough to earn grades but he didn't play enough to earn a rank then you have David Bada and Tyler Clark who didn't even earn grades and then behind Jonathan Allen who's ranked third out of 121 eligible interior defensive linemen like I already said you have Manai Knight is ranked 40th out of 121 with a 64.9 nine grade and Deron Payne is ranked 43rd with a 64.2 grade and then for edge rushers even though they barely played our highest ranked and graded edge rushers were Chase Young and Montez Sweat of course and again all both of those guys missed a lot of time and still Montez Sweat was ranked 23rd out of 113 eligible edge rushers Chase Young's right behind him ranked 25th Montez Sweat had a 75.6 overall grade and Chase Young had a 75.1 overall grade and what really made them were their run defense grades chase young had the highest one on our team with 84.5 monster sweat right behind him with 82.4 and then after that you have james smith williams ranked 89th out of 113 with a 56.9 overall grade and then casey Tuhill, who's ranked 106th out of 113 with a 49.1 overall grade and outside of the guys that are and then outside of chase young and montez sweat the guy with the highest grade is nate orchard with a 60 overall grade even though he only played one snap but of course only playing one snap means he wasn't eligible to be ranked and then the guy that's ranked the lowest is William Bradley King with the 40.4 the only guy that's like a deep orange color everybody else is green yellow and a light orange but at least he's not red like DeShazer Everett and John Bostic and then of course kicker wise none of them played enough 
to actually earn a rank in the NFL. But Joey Sly had a 63.4 overall grade and Brian Johnson had a 45.7. I think both of them deserved better than that. I really liked what I saw from both guys, especially Joey Sly. I feel like they both deserve to be ranked higher. Joey Sly's only missed kick at all this entire season was a block PAT. That was it. And that's funny that they didn't even have Chris Blewett or Dustin Hopkins included. But Dustin Hopkins is part of the charges and I'm assuming maybe Chris Blewett ended up with another team. So maybe that's why they're not put under Washington. And then, of course, punter wise, I mean, we had somebody else come in for one game, but Tressway started every game other than that one game. He's ranked 13th out of eligible punters with a 63.1 overall punt grade and a 60 kickoff grade. I feel like he's better than 13th, but whatever. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about all of these grades that Pro Football Focus gave us. Do you feel like they're accurate? I know Pro Football Focus isn't the end all be all, but it's a fairly decent guide to compare and contrast your own ideas with what you reflected from film i still gotta watch a lot of film from the previous season to see how i exactly feel about these pro football focus grades like i already talked about throughout the video there was some i didn't agree with already but who knows maybe if i go back and watch more film maybe i'll agree more or i'll disagree more but definitely let me know in the comment section how you feel about these grades and specifically how these players ranked amongst the rest of the nfl at their respective positions but as always man i appreciate all of the support Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for all of the upcoming content, videos, live streams, all of that. And as always, I appreciate all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Name you see scrolled on the screen right now. Man, I really appreciate y'all. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.